Hey you guys, it's me Kiana coming at you again today and I wanted to, as I told you guys in the previous video, do a few talking videos today. Um, later on I am going to show you guys the end results of the living room and I also wanted to talk about a couple of other issues, but I wanted to start off with this topic. Um, you know how around the holiday times we all, um, we all start to think about all the things that we are thankful for all the things that we've been through during the year or even beyond that. We all think about family members that have passed and, you know, the memories of them, uh, maybe memories of them cooking, maybe memories of them, you know, being around the holiday table, visiting aunts and uncles and grandmas and all of that good stuff. And we, we often sometimes get in a somber mood because of it. Sometimes we get a little sad. Sometimes we get a little depressed. But I am the total opposite, especially this year. For the past few weeks, I've been over, overjoyed, you guys. And I couldn't get in depth in, in the one minute videos with this. So I wasn't able to talk about it with you guys. But literally, I've my sleep has been disrupted um daddy will wake up sometimes and see me crying and thinking there's tears of sadness or and pain or um being hurt by something or someone and it's nowhere near that and i had to explain it to him you know people often say that they're saying when i think of the goodness of jesus and all that he's done for me but when you really live like that, when you really feel that with every fiber inside of you, some of y'all are not going to understand what I'm talking about, and this isn't for you. But if you want to know the ends, I have an insight on what it actually means to have thanksgiving in your heart, then listen up. When I think of the things that literally just two and a half years ago and I've shared with you guys I've shared with you guys many many times of the things that I've been through things that uh, my family has been through the struggles from homelessness to Pootie um, being resuscitated me being resuscitated giving birth to him being on bed rest through the whole pregnancy all of these things I've shared with you guys and I've shared them as I said in the video from yesterday for specific reasons I believe that we are to share things with each other so that you actually can see that our father still is in the miracle making or miracle performing business and I say that because we don't see all the time the blind being being their sight being restored we don't see all the time leprosy or AIDS or cancer being healed, being destroyed in people's bodies. We don't see all the time those things worked in our life. We don't see it automatically always affecting our family members, our immediate families where we actually talk to every day. We don't see that all the time. But what a tragedy it would be, what a tragedy it would be if the person that was healed, was delivered, was saved, kept it quiet. What a tragedy it would be if the person that did overcome, the person that went through and made it over, what a tragedy it would be if they were silent. And I do believe that that in itself shows that he is in the miracle making business. Because a miracle doesn't have to always affect the person directly. It doesn't have to always affect you. You're not the person that always has to be healed from cancer. But you can be delivered and healed from just hearing that person healed and delivered from cancer. Do you understand what I'm saying? So this is why even though I've, it's been used against me at times 
even though I've had to or I felt the need to explain myself even though at times I've cringed when I've realized I've said certain things because the flesh of me I'm human and the flesh of me wanted at times to silence myself but thank God I am I have a personal relationship with God and thank God I've learned to have a listening ear to listen to him and even though we're not perfect because none of us are in fact y'all see firsthand I'm not perfect you can go back on a whole bunch of videos to verify that one but again that personal relationship with God that personal relationship when you feel him deep down in your soul when he touches a part of you that a man can't touch when he hits a spot in you that you know your 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 best masseuse can't touch when he speaks to you that your your the most famous world world speaker can can speak to you too do you understand what i'm saying that's when you know that you have a personal relationship with him that's when you know you are in the mode of growing and I say that to say because we all do start somewhere just like a baby and in the Christian in the Christian faith there are such things as babes in Christ and mature Christians the thing is is that we're not made to be babies forever everything grows from the seeds in the ground, the vegetables growing to a seed, from a seed growing into a full-size vegetable, from a baby growing into a full-size human being. And so are we to grow in our faith the same way. And I'm saying all that to say, and to lead up to what I'm about to say now. When I think, when I think of the goodness because, see, I know it's been nothing but God has had his hand on me. Can't nobody tell me. Y'all can call me crazy. Y'all can think because y'all don't understand. Some of y'all may don't. Y'all can call me crazy and cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs all day long. But when I think of the last two and a half years, and when I was, and when it was two and a half years ago, and literally before I got into that shelter that you guys know about, I was laying on a gymnasium floor. Because it was called the cold weather shelter. And the cold weather shelter was a part of the shelter that I got into that you guys see all the time that I go and, and actually donate to. That was a part of that shelter. And that was the shelter that people went to when it was cold outside. And they didn't have space at that shelter that you guys see me go to. So you were told to go or encouraged to go to the cold weather shelter. Well, the cold weather shelter rotates weekly in different schools in the gymnasium. I was at the cold weather shelter for a couple of days. I slept on a gymnasium hard floor, mind you, on bed rest, pregnant. I did that two and a half years ago. And when I think of the goodness and all that he has done for me, I can't help but rejoice. I can't help but not be depressed. I can't help but move forward. I can't help but love him and praise him and have praise in my mouth. I can't help but live a certain way. I can't help but feel convicted. I can't help but but make sure I keep my eye on him. I can't help but listen to him. I can't help but preach to you guys sometimes. I can't help but to show you guys where I've been and where I am and where I'm going. I can't help. I can't help that. Okay, when I think of two and a half years ago, sleeping on a hard gymnasium floor, and the kids having practice after school hours all around the people that's laying there. When I think of how many child molesters was laying in that same gymnasium, when I think of how many rapists probably were laying in there and God kept me being a vulnerable woman in that position, I can't help 
but be thankful and have praise in my mouth. I can't help but put him first above and all uh, above all and first. I can't help that. And when I think when I think of the goodness and all that he's done for me when I think of the goodness and how he set me free see I can't speak for other people I can't speak for nobody else but me but when I sit and I think of where I was and where I am today when I think of the fact that he told told me that I was worthy despite my mistakes despite my imperfections when he told me that I am chosen because I am a child of his and a child of God when he told me that I am special not because of who I am but whose I am when he told me that he had a destiny for me a purpose for me a purpose beyond something I couldn't imagine I didn't know I was going to be able to reach a million and a half people I didn't know that when you look at my first video do you really think I thought that I was going to reach a million and a half people and still going strong when I did my first video did you really think that I thought I was going to get a cookbook deal out of it when I did my first video I didn't know that people that were also in homeless shelters that actually was ruining me from their laptop computer that they was able to be lucky enough and blessed enough to get. They were actually looking at my testimony video and saying, you know what, she was just where I was at and I thought that I wasn't going to be able to get out of this place. And look, she did it. I don't see her being that special, so guess what, I probably can do it too. Did I think that I was going to be able to do that? Did I really think that God had that purpose for me? No, I didn't. So, his vision for me, his vision for me, was way bigger than the vision I could put on myself, I had on myself. But see, when the definition of faith is believing in that of which you cannot see, and that I had. So I come to you guys today telling you to be encouraged, telling you to have faith, telling you to make sure that even in the holiday times when you maybe feel the need or, or feel the desire to get a little depressed and down, all you have to say to yourself is when I think of the goodness and all he's done for me, and repeat that over and over and over again, tell me you don't feel nothing in your spirit when you do it. Because all of us have a past. All of us have overcame things. It could be molestation, it could be rapes, it could be homelessness, it could be cancer, it could be your mom beating you behind all day, every day when you was little, it could be abandonment by your husband, your father, your man, it could be all of that. It could be the church that turned their back on you, it could be nobody wanting to you thought, but when I think of the goodness and all he's done for me, my soul can't do nothing but rejoice. So I send this message to you, you. Because not only did you need this, but I was told to give it to you. And I thank you all so much for tuning in and for listening, with not only with an open heart and an open ear, but an open spirit. I love you guys truly with all of my heart and soul. Truly. And be blessed.